Hey everybody, just wanted to get started and let you know that if you want to participate, I get a lot of haze and highs and everything else like that, but if you want to participate in this, um, if we're already connected, send me a message uh, with your email address so I can send you the link, or you can uh, let me know that you're ready to go and you're connected in the comments and I'll choose two people to go through with the networking session. I just want to give it a few more minutes so that we can get everybody lined up and I get the pages set up and check this out and then we'll go live again. We're still going to stay live. I'm just going to go back to the other screen. All right, we got one person. We got Derek Ludlow trying to dial in right now. We need one more. Go ahead and send me your email address. Let me know you're ready to participate, and we'll go ahead and add you in, and then we'll get started.
Okay, sorry everybody for the delay. Um, still working out the technical difficulties and trying to figure out how to make this all work. Uh, but uh, it seems like getting people to dial in on the spot is not as easy as you would think it would be. But great news is we had a Marine handy and the Marine made it work. So uh, I'm about to bring Derek Ludlow in to the screen here. And let's see if I can make this one work right here. And there we go, I think. Can you see both, Derek? Or you just see me talking? Uh, hmm. All right, I think you just have me now, so. <laughs> So I thought I had this handled. <laughs> it's turning into a debacle. I got Josh Farmer waiting on the line down below. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get this screen back up here so we can talk to both people. So uh, give me one second. Um, oh, there I got it now. All right. So. Boom. Can you there hear me, go. Derek? I've got you just fine now. So there was a bright red button that said send live that I didn't hit. So we've got Josh. Give me one second. I got Josh on the line. We're going to do him next. But, you know, hey, thanks for joining me, Derek. I really appreciate your uh, flexibility late at night. Oh, thanks um, for doing this. Yeah. Where? So you're. are you in the Cincinnati, Ohio area now? No. So I'm still active duty right now. So I will be transitioning officially uh, going on terminal at the end of June. Uh, so oh, I'm great. looking to go back home to the, you know, Cincinnati, Ohio, Florence, Kentucky area and start in early August. Fantastic. So where are you at now? So I'm in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Camp Lejeune. Oh, okay. So how's the weather down there? Uh, it's a little cooler for us today. It's going to be in the 70s this weekend, though, <laughs> so we'll take it. So I'm in the D.C. area, and, uh, you know, they shut down the federal government at 1 p.m. Uh, <laughs> because it was going to snow. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> not because it was snowing. Uh, and then I got notes from my kid's school that, um, yeah, they were closing the schools, too, at 3 p.m. because it was going to snow. Now, with that being said, D.C. traffic, it took me three hours to go 19 <laughs> miles uh, with an inch of slush on the ground. Uh, so I had to get a coffee on the way home. So that's why you guys have me uh, late at night instead of a bed. <laughs> so let's talk about you. So um, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, moving to back to Cincinnati, Ohio. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? Uh, so my background, I'm an Intel specialist by trade. I've done that my entire career for the most part. I did a couple of years of recruiting. So I uh, have that you know, talent acquisition kind of side of the house. That still also interests me. Uh, but like I said, the most part, I've been Intel chiefs or operations chiefs for the past 14 years or so. Okay. So what do you want to do? <laughs> that's, that's always <laughs> a big question. Yeah. Uh, so... Like I said, I, I do really enjoy talent acquisition and the HR side of the house because I this the really the thing I enjoy most is helping people out and helping people through their paths and just uh, pointing them down the right direction. So, so more the, of that the, senior leadership side of the house is yep. what I really enjoy. And that's where you kind of get sucked into you want to be a leader. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, that's the challenge. And so, you know, that's what you get your drive from. You've been changing lives. You've been motivating, inspiring, mentoring people, you know, to accomplish things for the greater good your whole career. And now you have to pick a job, right? Exactly. So there's no job that says leader. So you say you, you like the talent acquisition and you like the HR side of it. Have you worked in HR specifically or has it been all talent acquisition? Aside from your typical, you know, uh, HR related tasks you've had throughout your career mentoring. Right. So it's really just been the talent acquisition as the recruiter, except for a small portion where I kind of did a little more when I was working at MEPS. I worked at MEPS for about six months. So it was a little more of the, the screening and onboarding and interviewing than just the, the acquisition itself. Right. But it's still 
very much in the talent it's, acquisition arena. So yes. So when we talk about going into talent acquisition, um, talk to me a little bit about your experience, like what you've done in talent acquisition. And so it was just really the normal recruiter stuff, uh, more or less. So you know, hitting the streets of Paducah, Kentucky, you know, finding qualified young men, men and women to join the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, so over that time, I believe it was 73 was my total number, mm -hmm. uh, with only two drops from the from boot camp drops. So okay. the number stayed pretty good. Um, and like I said, just just changing those lives and getting those people yeah. where they needed to be was really what drove me. So I have no frame of reference. So how does 73 relate to, uh, you know, your peers? What's the average? So it, it's really right there in the average. So we're shooting for, they say about two, two to three a month. So okay. you know, you're looking for 72 to 108 roughly through your three year tour. Okay. So uh, you know that there's, there are differences in military talent acquisition, you know, for our military recruiters in the talent acquisition field itself, right? Yeah, absolutely. So when you're talking about in the military, you're trying to find, you know, candidates to serve and you'll train them, right? From scratch. You want them to have the raw ability, the tools, the values, the morals, the fitness, uh, and then get them to sign and then, you know, the military take care of the rest. But when it comes to the talent acquisition side, you're talking about sourcing for specific positions, you know, behavioral interviews, right. you know, dealing with uh, salary requirements, negotiations, um, you know, uh, time to hire metrics, uh, and, and, and so forth and so forth. So have you been talking to a lot of recruiters in the private sector to see if what you want to do is what they do? So that I really haven't been able to yet. So that's what I'm really starting to get into. We just got off a of deployment. I just mm -hmm. really got to dive into the transition process. So, so I've started recently trying to reach out and talk to more people and really get a good understanding of what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna dial you back a little bit. So you've got six months, you're kind of in, kind of getting danger close, let's be honest, because yeah. it takes a while. This is the biggest challenge we all face is figuring out what we wanna do uh, with our lives. You know, And so um, would a job in operations be on the table if someone gave you a good job you know doing operations management uh oh, would you be interested absolutely and what about a job that had to do with uh you know you said intel was it all source or it was, was all it source perfect? so if you had something that was you know doing financial analysis or business an anal analytics or something along those lines in the intel field uh or you know analysis field would you be interested in that i absolutely would so okay so let's say we're not sure yet Right. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to tell you uh, the challenge we're going to have with looking at your profile, and I'm going to go to that in a minute, is you don't know what you want to do. So it's hard to brand you for that job, right? So the key Absolutely. is going to be doing informational interviews. I mean, like literally, you should be doing three to five a week at this point. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to the screen and I'm going to walk you through how to find uh, people in those fields sure. that you can reach out to and send messages to. So let's see. Okay. Now, I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to take us off the screen for a second. Uh, boom. Send live. Okay. So you can still hear me? Okay, great. So I've got your profile here. Uh, and, and it kind of says what you've told us. It says, you know, that you have this, you know, great group of experience and you're not sure what you really want to do next because you haven't had the time to actually talk to people and figure out, you know, what they do for a living, you know, like what their days are like, what their challenges are, you know, um, and, and and whether it's something you want to do and what's their what's their plan, what's the growth within these companies and these industries. So, so what I would say for you, Derek, is the first thing that we're going to go through here is, you know, you need to find being a Marine is easy. And what I mean by that, being a Marine is not actually easy. So I, 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 I want to rephrase that. But when it comes to informational interviews, being a Marine is easy. So what I want to say is, so you want to go into talent acquisition, right? So let's go, uh, let's go with the recruiter, right? So we're going to type in recruiter and hit enter. And so when we click people, it's going to give you a list of recruiters. And, and I have a large network, so we'll make sure we're connected so that you have access you know, as a secondary connection to my network. But so now you want to go where? 
you want to go Cincinnati, Ohio area, right? So we're going to go to locations and say Cincinnati. That's Kentucky. Am I typing it wrong? Is it the same one? <laughs> okay, well, I will uh, work on that one. Let's see here, Ohio. Yeah, so there's no Cincinnati. Okay, well, boom, we'll go with that. So now we'll hit apply, and that's going to give us recruiters in the Cincinnati, Ohio area right there. And then now what I want to do is I want to find, let's start off and see if there are any Marines that are currently recruiters in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. So I'll go over here to all filters and you can see this, right? So I'm going to all filters and go down to past company and I'm going to type in, let's see, Marine Corps. So United States Marine Corps and let's hit apply. So there's 23 right now that have been recruiters or are recruiters in the Cincinnati Ohio area. So um, here's an executive recruiter, account manager professions, you know, here's one at Total Quality Logistics. You know, we've got some here, here's Ford, Ford Motor Company, you know, Schlumberger, uh, he was a recruiter, oh, he was a Marine recruiter. So that's somebody you might want to talk to on how they went into operations management and logistics, right? So what you would want to do is take any one of these and you can go through the list. You know, there's multiple here. And if you want, you can even go here to current companies and they'll tell you like, these are the top companies. So like uh, Schlumberger, see if it's only one. Yeah, it is only one. So uh, we'll take that off. But you want to, you want to basically apply these tools to find marines now say you go through these marines and you don't find one well then you know you go back to all filters and you and you go to past companies and maybe you add you know uh u.s navy right and u.s army right and let's see because the veteran's a veteran i mean the easy connection is with marine and so now there's 207 results. So here's one. Here's a, a, a regional recruiter at Orion Talent, one of the big, you know, staffing firms. And you could see like Kristen. Let's see what Kristen was in the army. So what you want to do is you want to talk to these. You want to send a note, send a connection request with a short message. Is it, hey, you know, hi, Kristen. You know, I know that notice that you're a, a recruiter at Orion, at Orion Talent and you were a veteran. And you're in the Ohio, you know Cincinnati, Ohio area. You know I'm a Marine. I want to go into town acquisition. You got a few minutes for a phone call. I mean, nine times out of a ten, a Marine will accept that. Other veterans very similar because we know what the transition is like, right? If they have the time, they'll make the time. And uh, you just get on a few phone call with a few of them, and you just start asking them questions about, you know, it's not asking for a job. You're not even in the window yet. Now it's like, what do you do? What do you like? Okay, you work for a staffing firm. What, how does that work? Do you get requisitions? You know, how many people do you talk to in a day? Do you negotiate offers? Do you prep them for interviews? You get where I'm going with this, right? And you could do the same thing for operations. You know, if we went up here and just changed it to, you know, operations. Let's just do operations, right? Let's do operations. Boom. People. And then go back here, Cincinnati. Now that I know it's apply. And then, you know, all filters, past company. And in this court case, you might even want to add, you know, like Marine Corps recruiting. Be fine. And hit apply. And so there's 924 results of people that were in operations. Like here's an operations manager at Amazon, you know, uh, Jurgensen, bunch of Amazon. So you get where I'm going with this. And then you just start reaching out and having those conversations. So let's now go take a look at your profile. Um, I like it so far. I mean, I, I like the picture, good smile. I like the background. I'm guessing that's Cincinnati. That's fantastic. Um, the headline. So this is where it's okay for now. 
Um, but as you start to dial in what you want to do, you're going to want to actually um, start to refine that and to say what you want to do. So if you want to go into talent acquisition, you know, what kind of talent acquisition do you do? You know, high volume, are you doing executive recruiting? You know, th those kind of things or what your specialties are. Uh, the clearance would be good for that as well if you're if you're going to be recruiting for for, for you know government agencies um, or government contractors if you're going to go into operations same thing you want to kind of tell people a little bit more about your background uh, and i like to say tell people what you want to do and why we should consider you for those roles now here's where it gets so you say here you want to be town acquisition right and then your story starts off i'm a transitioning intelligence professional right so there's got to be this continuity uh, in your profile, and and I I'm gonna try to. It's kind of I think for people watching, it's gonna be weird. Let me see if I can do this here real quick. Uh, boom. No, it's not gonna work. Here, let's do this. And there we go. So. As we move on down, is that too small for you to see? Uh, I'll make it work. <laughs> I just want to break it up a little bit. I'm going to have to find a better screen for this to work. But um, so when we go down to your summary here, you know, it's really got to be telling me if you're going to tell me you're a talent acquisition specialist, then what I want to hear is how many years of talent acquisition experience do you have? What are your major accomplishments? So, you know, understanding that you may be getting out with 20 years, but you don't have 20 years of experience, right? Yes. If you're going to go into talent acquisition, how many years of experience do you have? You've got, how many years were you a, a recruiter oh, for? Three. So really then you're talking about, you know, a talent acquisition professional with over three years of experience doing the, you know, sourcing, you get where I'm going with this. Right, Because absolutely. ultimately, that's the kind of, and, and the mentors you find will help you weave this story. Same thing now for operations, you probably have more experience when it comes to uh, connecting with, uh, well, you could paint a better pour and then be of over 10 years of operations experience or the same thing with analytics. And so as you start to talk to people and find, um, as you start to figure out what your role is, let me see if I can do this here. Well, I'm not as lucky on this one. I'm still figuring out. But as you start to figure out what you want to do, you want to paint that picture here. In the first three lines, especially. So, you know, I tell people, you know, if you want to be a project manager, then tell us that you're hopefully PMI certified project manager with X number of years experience managing projects ranging in value up to this scope, this many people. You get where I'm going with this, you know, sure do. Uh, this many worth this many millions of dollars in this many locations. So once you figure out what you want to do is when you're going to have to start telling that story there. And then when we come down to your experience, you know, uh, you know, you really, if you're going to say here that you have five years of experience or over five years of experience doing town acquisition, and this is the challenge you're going to face, then you don't need to go back more than five years because you're like, oh, it was back in 2005. Yeah, it was a while ago. So you're going <laughs> to, <Yeah. laughs> okay, so we're going to have to work on that a little bit. So um, you got to paint that story, right? You got to paint that picture. Uh, and really in that case, having three years of town acquisition experience, you know, close to 15, you know, 13 to 15 years ago, do you really have that experience anymore? Right. Probably not. Right. So then it's really going to be about um, building those relationships with recruiters that see your ability to communicate, that value your experience in the military, and it will give you that opportunity based on relationships. Uh, but for the other stuff, you know, the analytics-based stuff or, you know, the operations or even anything from uh, training development, uh, you know, project management, you know, whatever it is, you know, you can start to paint that picture from your experience. And then, uh, down in your degree, okay. So you got to, you're gonna finish your degree before you get out. I'm gonna not quite. I'm not just gonna okay. Miss it. 
So once you do finish it, I would take the year off the degree so you can show that it's uh, complete. Um, and then these will only matter for your certificates if they really apply, like Lean Six Sigma will matter. Have you gone through right. Onward's Opportunity yet? I have. So I'm actually have uh, I'm going to be starting the TMP certification here okay. next month for that. Fantastic. And then I really like the volunteer experience here. Uh, that's that's really it's really nice. Um, and then down in endorsements, uh, skills and endorsements. You know, again, you have the mil you have the military focused stuff. These should be the top three skills that apply to what your professional identity is going to be. Right. right. Cool. And let's see uh, connections. So you got 194 connections. I would like to see you at 501. Right. So spend a few times each day connecting with professionals uh, in the fields that interest you. As okay. I go down here to your activity, you know, I go over here and look at your posts. And so, you know, if you're, um, you know, sharing this kind of stuff, I'd like to see you start sharing things that are more your professional identity. Maybe some of your red, white, and blue, team red, white, and blue stuff that you do. I would stay away from the religious stuff uh, just because it's LinkedIn. But, you know, when we talk right. about the things that are important to you outside of the military, don't be afraid to share some of that because people that do that in organizations that may interest you. Uh, and then, uh, I'm going to need to do this real quick. There we go. And so don't be afraid to, to start posting the things that are uh, important to you that will resonate with other people. Because ultimately for LinkedIn, for there to be a connection, there usually has to be some kind of a personal connection, something that you feel connected to the individual. So I would, you know, share some of this stuff. You attend events in the military, you go to networking events, uh, you do informational interviews, you grab coffee with someone, start taking pictures and thank them for their time, you know, do a quick post or whatever like that. If you go to anything with the volunteer work you do, great tag red, white, and blue, tag the people, you know, with them or whatever else you're doing. But, you know, as you start to determine what path you want to go, whether it's you know, operations, talent acquisition, whether it's uh, project management, you know, whatever it ends up being, you'll know it when you talk to people. Um, then you'll want to start sharing some articles that you can find on that. And so you can go off platform, find articles and just copy and paste uh, the link in there. Once it populates below, delete the link and just write why it's important. Okay. Make sense? Absolutely. So you got some work cut out for you. I do. Um, I so what I'll challenge you to do is give it about two weeks. I, I'm telling you it works. I mean, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without building these relationships. So if you give it about two weeks to a month, you know, get those connections up, do those informational interviews, uh, and then get your profile to, to kind of resonate with what you want to do and make sure right. it's something that exists in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. I mean, keep in mind, if you exhaust people to talk to in Cincinnati, you can go outside of Cincinnati to talk to people and find mentors and always come back to Cincinnati for the jobs once you have the professional identity dialed in. So um, spend a few weeks dialed in. When, you're, when you've got it locked in, send me a message back, right? Okay. And we'll get uh, on the screen uh, and we'll go over it together for everybody and see how the changes and, and We'll talk to you about some of these informational interviews you've had. That sounds great. Awesome. So what, and you got a minute or two, what questions do you have for me? That was kind of rapid fire. <laughs> no, that was great. I really appreciate the help. Uh, like you, you said, the biggest thing is finding out what the true calling is. Uh, in the military, it's easy. Like you said, we get to do it, you know, for 20 years until it's time to stop. Uh, so I do, I have some informational interviews lined up this week. I'm just going to keep plugging away at them and, uh, and just hope for the best and see what comes out of it. Don't hope for the best. Go get it. Hope, hope right? not a coat. Right. Go, go get it. You know, to quote Herb Thompson, he did 2,000 informational interviews. You know, um, you have everything you need to be successful. If you really want it and you put in the work, you will be successful at whatever you choose to do. You just have to build that plan. Right. And, it, and, and if you're not, you know, getting the results you need or if you're not finding people that say you're a good fit for that role, 
you have to do that self-assessment and say like, do I have to look at something else? But the idea is, is you just have to go get it. And if you show that passion, go get it. If you display what made you such a successful Marine, you will be successful in your transition. Awesome. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. As you can tell, that was a really big cup of coffee. But uh, <laughs> thanks. I, I really appreciate it, Derek. And uh, we'll hit you up soon. All right, Michael. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. Cool. All right. Let's go back to here. Josh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, now we're about to go live with Josh Farmer as soon as I figure out how to get Josh into the screen. Uh, I'm somehow making this work. Josh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Josh? Can you hear me now, Josh? How about now? I cannot. Hold on. All right, let me just move Derek out. All right. Can you hear me now? Hold on, I got you. All right, guys, I'm trying to get Josh in. He is ready to go. We are just having some technical difficulties. Um, and we will get back in a second. Let me see if I can get him in here. I don't know why he keeps dropping out. Uh, can you hear me, Josh? <laughs> All right, I have no idea why it's not working right now. Um, let's try it over here. Let me get rid of some of these. I may just have 15 Josh's in here, so let's try this now. Hmm. Since I can't get Josh in here on volume for some reason, it's not working. I'm gonna just give him a quick overview of Josh's uh, profile. So there we go, let's get this going. All right, so 
as we talk about Josh, I'm gonna I'm gonna split back over for a second here. There we go. So we got Josh. Uh, I'm gonna send him a connection request for trying. Boom. All right. So first things first. I don't like seeing this blue screen with the connected white dots. And so the first thing I would say that Josh should be doing is he should be um, putting a background image. I love this picture right here. I would probably like to see it zoomed in a little bit, but that's just a really small thing. Um, so what I would do is if you went to his profile, I'll show you on mine real quick. So what I tell people to do is go to uh, Google and then they type in LinkedIn background images click images and then you've got all these background images and you can actually go like uh, project management Boom. and you so you have all these different ones you can pick so what I tell people to do is go ahead and just like say I like this one you can um, save click on it save the image save it to your desktop, and then whatever it is, you go back to your profile, you go to your profile, you click this pencil, then you click this pencil up here, and you can actually click to change your photo, upload it, and then hit apply. And I'm telling you, as you can see, it makes a huge difference between that. So coming over here, uh, I think this is why I want, really wanted to talk to Josh. I mean, you've got uh, pretty much your, uh, standard um you know i'm a transitioning leader and, and and you can see it here as well so you know operations project management logistics management people and processes so this is somebody that really doesn't quite know yet exactly what he wants to do um so i would really like to see just like i said before with derek i'd like to see josh do more informational interviews and really start to um figure out exactly what's next And uh, so, you know, as he starts to figure out what's next, he'll be able to really dial that headline in to say what he wants to do and why he'd be good at that role. And then we come down to the about section. So here's something, you know, as we hit this about section, notice that you only see the three lines first. So the bis biggest thing I would say, Josh, is you don't have 22 years of operations management experience, project management experience, or logistics management experience you have 22 years of experience in an industry, right? So the, what I would say there, and I'm gonna move on over to here real quick. Let's see if I can get me in here. So, so what, what I would say is that, you know, when, when you figure out what you wanna do, do exactly, whether, whether it's operations, operations project management, management, or logistics, or something else, through your informational interviews, and it's in the area where you want to be, um, and you start to dial that role in, then you start to have to project yourself with the number of years of experience that are appropriate for that role. So if the jobs you're looking at in most private sector jobs are not going to require more than 10 to 12 to 15 years of experience. So if you're looking at jobs and they say it requires 10 years of experience, and most of them require 8 to 10 that you're looking at, then you don't want to say you have 22 years of experience. Because, because it really paints a picture of somebody that is not well suited to the role. I mean, it, you, you can look at it in many different ways, but it could be somebody that would be considered, uh, you hear it a lot, uh, over-experienced is a term they use. I'll let you translate that however you want. But in the private sector, you do not typically have high performers that stay in the same exact job for 22 years, right? And, and that's what you're really saying when you say you have 22 years of operations management experience. It doesn't make you more marketable. So I tell people, if you're going for jobs that require 12 years of experience or eight to 10 years of experience, you can say you have over 11 or over 12 or even over 14, but don't go much higher than that. Just go a little bit over or say you have more than those many years of experience so that it really starts to relate with that person that's looking at your profile. And then I'd like to see you, you know, know, less, uh, you know, in dynamic, fast, fast-paced environments. environments. You, you know, know, if you're, you're talking, talking about operations management, management, I'd like to hear, 
you know, what, what type of operations you've actually, actually managed. Um, and, and so, you know, give, give me some more experiences, you know, types, types of budgets, number of pieces, number of, you know, pieces, you know, of equipment that you've moved, sizes of property books, you know, movement of, you know, everything what has to do with operations. And the same thing with project management, the same thing with logistics. You know, if you're going to say program improvement, process improvement, I want to hear a little bit about your experience and how many years you've actually worked in, you know, the process improvement realm and what specific disciplines you've done it for. So you're going to really have to dial in that, um, that about that summary to speak to that. And, and you can have multiple ones to tie together as long as it all aligns with your professional identity. And, uh, you know, I would, you can leave it here, but I usually say take, take out the available for appointment, put it in your, um, in your open opportunities tab, which I'll show you where that's at and let those recruiters find it that way. Um, come down here. I would make sure I don't like these great bullets. They look like they're not really organizations that exist. So, you know, I would probably put us army or I would make sure fourth infantry division has a uh, symbol associated. If they have a LinkedIn page, it should work. And, um, you know, I would probably add more of your master resume bullets in here. So if you oversee the planning, training, and implementation of military, police, anti-terrorism, and physical security operations for an infantry division, right? So yeah, you do that for a division of over 20,000 soldiers, but you know, how many people are involved doing the tasks that you do? What it, I would love to see some of your actual, um, I would love to see some of your actual accomplishments some of the programs you've led, some of the things you've implemented, you know, whether it's you processes that you've improved uh, or, you know, training programs, whatever you want to talk about. But I'd like to see those major accomplishments listed there by bulletized. And you could do it from your master resume. And if you come down here, you know, I, and to be honest, you know, you're going to have to change the title as well. So if you're going to say, I, I wouldn't actually say executive police operations. If you want to go to operations, you know, I would put, operations manager, right? And then down here say, you know, as, you know, you know, whatever your role was, if you were the executive police or, you know, as the operations manager for uh, military police, anti-terrorism and physical security, you know, operations for an infantry division, I did this and share the examples. Same thing down here, executive operations, really not a job title. It's not going to populate in any searches uh, that, that are really going to resonate with us. So, you know, you either want to stick with the operations management career field, or if you're going to say you're a training manager, then go into training management, right? So, and 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 say like, you know, training manager or training, man you know, uh, senior training manager or training program manager or training project manager. You get where I'm going with this. You should be aiming to have each one of these jobs uh, actually be a real job in the private sector. If you go to any major job board, whether it's you know Google, LinkedIn, Indeed, whatever, you'll be able to find those jobs exist where you want to be. Uh, same thing. I'd like to see uh, your qualified bullet accomplishments. You know the things that you've done, not what your job was. Uh, same thing down here. Um, operation strategist. You know, if we're going to stick with operations, I would really love to see you say more about what you did uh, than what, you know, so these are all your, what your job was. I'd like to see qualified accomplishments and it'll go back. So, you know, just make sure that you can do this in a way that relates to what you want to do. Uh, um, you're done your degree, I'm assuming. Once you're done, I would say uh, remove the years. Uh, and then I'd come down here again, if you're going to stick with, you know, it's good that you have this down here. These are the ones that you're saying you have, uh, make sure that the fields that you want to do, uh, and then, you know, fill these out, start to include the other things that are aligned with operations, operations, planning, process, improvement, things that look for the jobs you want to do. Um, yeah. And that's it. I mean, start doing those, uh, searches like you saw that I was doing with Derek and, uh, I think you'd be really successful. So. You know, Josh, I know we missed our session. We weren't able to get the, the sound working. Uh, I'm going to get better at this. Uh, I will definitely reach out to you the next time when we get started. 
We'll do a test ahead of time. I'll prep you in the session. If you're available, we'll get it all working and then we'll take it from there. Well, uh, I'm going to go over real quick and see if there's any last minute questions uh, in the session. And then I'm going to pop off. All right. Doesn't look like there's anything crazy. Hopefully uh, you guys got some value of this tonight. I'm going to work to get it shorter um, and really get into the nitty gritty of talking to people. But thank you for your time. I hope this has been beneficial and we'll catch you again soon.